everybody, welcome back to my channel, My Great Australian Dream. My name is Tracy Chen and I am a migration lawyer based in Australia. Mason Chen Law Group. I've dropped our contact details below, so if you need advice about migrating to Australia, we can definitely help you there. Now, there's been a lot happening over the last few months in migration. However, there has been some changes in the skills assessing authorities and what they are looking for and how they operate now. Now, there is still a skills assessment process. A lot of people were saying, oh, are they going to remove it? I don't think they're going to remove it. I just think they're going to change the process because the process was quite difficult. There's a lot going on. Um, there probably isn't enough transparency as well. So today I'm just going to talk about Vet Assess. In my next video, I'll also talk about the other skills assessing bodies. Vet Assess. This video captures the overall requirements for a Vet Assess skills assessment. However, I will also be releasing mini courses on courses.tracymigration.com.au which dives deeper into a Vet Assess application and some of the things to look out for. So today's video is just a general overview. Now there's a lot of skills assessing bodies for the Australian immigration system and you need them generally for your skilled visa applications so for example the 189 the 190 or the 491 you will also need it for the 186 direct entry visa and you also need it for some 482 applications depending on the occupation where you studied as well but it's not a full skills assessment those ones for 482 are called the 482 skills assessments I think we call them TSS skills assessment so you don't need to worry too much about that today this is more if you want to apply for a skilled visa 491 189 190 and also the 186 direct entry skills assessment is absolutely compulsory there's no way around it and again I don't think they're gonna remove it because if they remove it there's really no way to check whether someone's documents are real or everything is actually valid and correct you actually need you know specific skills assessing bodies for it so rule of thumb is that vet assess skills assessment is mainly for for professional occupations. So some of these include marketing specialist, restaurant manager, life scientist, as well as management consultant. It's not quite as specific as some of the other occupations, like any ICT occupations, it's not assessed by a vet assess because that's very ICT specific. Nursing occupations are not assessed here either because they're very medical and healthcare specific. So they have different skills assessing bodies for that. And the way that vet assess works is the rule of thumb is you must have the relevant degree at the required skill level plus at least one year post qualification work experience. Now this second part I just mentioned the post qualification work experience that varies from occupation to occupation we'll go through it today and go through some examples as well but first of all the relevant qualification is very important. Now what does relevant qualification mean? So for example the occupation marketing specialist the relevant qualification would be a bachelor of marketing that is the required level. Now if you completed a Bachelor of Marketing in Australia you would satisfy the first requirement of this. Now if you completed a Bachelor of Marketing overseas that's still possible but that Bachelor degree must also be equivalent to an Australian degree. So it has to be the same level because Australia bachelor degrees here, there's a certain level it's taught at and also it's a certain time frame as well. So it's usually at least three years. There are some degrees overseas that are bachelor degrees, they call them, but they're only for two years. In Australia, that's not considered a true bachelor degree. That would be an associate degree. So you actually have to check whether your bachelor degree is at the required level. If you do not have the relevant qualification at the required level, you probably won't get a positive skills assessment. Well, the answer is you won't get a positive skills assessment unless you do further studies. So you have the first part. So that bachelor degree has to be at the required level. The second part is that it must be major in marketing. Then you must have one year post qualification relevant work experience. Now, as a marketing specialist, that means you must have one year post qualification work experience as a marketing specialist. That means that you worked post qualification at least 20 hours per week. Depending on what country it is, you would expect to be paid at the required pay rate for it, the average pay rate. Like for example here, a marketing specialist here wouldn't be paid anything less than probably $50,000, $55,000 per annum. So if it's too low, you've got to be careful as well because you've got to show that you're at the required level. 
Now, a marketing specialist isn't someone that goes out and works with clients one-to-one. -one. That's more like a sales role. Marketing is really someone that supports the business growth and objectives through marketing campaigns and creating that collateral. So you're the person that's really behind the scenes, developing all the marketing collateral behind it to meet the requirements of the business. So for example, the business wants to expand into a certain market in another country. Okay, well, you're responsible for that project. You're responsible for just delivering the collateral and plans to make sure that the business can reach their objective. So that's an example of it. Got to be very careful here. And what's really important here is also the scope of the company. So you have to be able to demonstrate that this company actually does require marketing specialists and that gets a little bit tricky. Like an example is a restaurant. It's very hard to justify why one single restaurant would need a marketing specialist because it's a lot to hire in-house and there's only a few projects to work on, right? Because you're a restaurant, you're in a certain area, you're only marketing to a certain cohort of people who live nearby or something like that. For a project like that, which is rather small, you probably just hire someone to do that. But for example, if you're a marketing specialist and you work in head office of a chain of restaurants and hospitality venues, then that would be fine. So you've got to be really careful there. They can definitely refuse your application on the basis of the company not meeting the scope that they are looking for. If you're a marketing specialist working in a marketing agency, managing a number of different clients where it's like, you know, a restaurant or a different business coming to you and be like, I want to market my business, then, you know, overall you should be fine. So the scope of the company is very important too. So that's just an example. Now in my course, I'll go into a bit more detail about how these occupations work and what other ways you can qualify for it. But let's move on to overall documents that you're looking for. So first of all, for a VetAssess application, when you actually go to the portal yourself, you'll see that you can't submit the application without providing all the documents that you need. So you'll need like your ID. They're very strict on the identification documents that you need to provide. You need to provide a passport photo as well. Can't be too old. It's supposed to be within the last six months. You need to provide your qualification documents. Make sure that they are a high quality scan in color as well. It just makes it easier for the assessor to assess that. Your reference letter has to be on point. They provide a template. So you'll be able to follow that template and provide uh, all the information that is required. You need to provide evidence of payment. So this is a really key part because if you don't provide enough evidence of payment, then it'll be very hard for you to get a positive a skills assessment. So you need to have a payslip, you need to have employment contract, you need to have a work reference letter. The next few I want to talk about are really important because it actually proves you were actually paid. Because technically speaking, you can make payslips, you can make employment contract and a work reference letter is definitely made. But bank statements, tax return documents and superannuation or insurance documents, you can't really make that up. Well, you can, but you cannot, if you know what I mean. You can't make that up. So that actually shows that you were paid. Now, if you're paid in cash, you can't use that work experience. There's no way they're going to accept it. It will cause a big problem for you. Those are some of the things to be aware of. Now, going to submit it is another ball game altogether because it depends on whether you're gonna submit under standard processing or priority processing. This is something we paint about every day. Priority processing is very hard to obtain. There's only 35 slots per day and it's gone within seconds of it opening at 9 a.m. There's people around that probably have 10 computers going just for this app. So you're going to have to keep trying. However, even if you keep trying for a couple of months, it's probably still better than applying down standard processing because standard processing is taking like four, five, six months. I mean, the fastest one I got was like four to five months recently, but there's still some that have taken longer than six months. So it's very difficult. So so I would still suggest to just apply for priority processing if you can. All right, so that's a very broad overview of the requirements for VetAssess. I hope that was helpful. If you really want to get down to the crux of it and learn it, you can book a consultation with myself or one of our fantastic lawyers or agents. I also have mini courses available at courses.tracymigration.com.au. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we'll talk about the Australian Computer Society. Thank you and have a great day ahead.